Hey guys, welcome back. For anyone who's new here, I'm Jess. And I'm Jackie. And we are a military couple who are moving to Yokosuka, Japan. We are doing a series right now about our experience moving from San Diego to Japan, which includes everything that we did, paperwork-wise, household goods, storage, you know, blah, 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 blah. A one-stop shop for everything that you need to know if you're going to be PCSing. And of course, because we are traveling during a time of COVID, this is the most up-to-date that you need to know. So today, we are talking about the paperwork. Our favorite part. Overall experience with paperwork has been nothing short of a nightmare. Every single time that we would do our paperwork, then they tell us we have more paperwork or that we did it wrong. It was very painful process, so we're hoping by pointing out very specifically what paperwork you will probably need, you'll be able to get a head start and not end up going through what we did. If you are on our channel because you like us in general, or you're excited about our move to Japan, or you're a Disney fan, this is not the video for you. This one is going to be dry. It's going to just be strictly paperwork, so unless you are currently PCSing or you are hoping to PCS Oconus and want to know exactly what you need paperwork-wise, skip this video unless you just want to support us by giving us watch hours, in which case, thank you. In the beginning, we got our soft orders in December, but hard orders came in January. Check your end sips. We didn't realize it until after like 14 days after they had arrived or something like that, and then I got a text from like receipts and transfers who at that time had no idea what a pain in the butt I was about to be. <sighs> this entire process took us from uh, January until May. Yeah, until May. Yeah, exactly. Do not wait until the last minute. The minute you get orders, you start this process, okay? Okay. So the very first thing as soon as you get your orders is you're going to want to be doing an overseas screening for you and any dependents you have. For me, as the military member, here is exactly what I needed for my overseas screening. They wanted me to do an HIV test. They wanted me to make sure that my immunizations were up to record. DD form 2807 pages 1 and 2, which basically are like when you first joined and they have like that whole list of like, have you ever experienced tuberculosis and stuff like that? And you just say yes or no, and if it's a yes, you got to explain it. NAVMED 13-2. 1300-2. Oh, sorry. 1300-2. Make sure your PHA is up to date, so less than a year old. Have your dental be up to date and make sure you're either in class one or two. And then dental is going to sign page three of the NAVMED 1300-1. If you see me looking down, it's because there's a lot of paperwork. So I hope you guys are taking notes. A page 13, which is a privacy act for your uh, medical stuff. A NAVPERS 1300-16 Fill out page three, patient identity block, include a copy of your orders, and then when all of that is done, you make an appointment to turn all of that in. For my overseas screening, I had to, number one, go in person to Navy treatment facility. If you are being treated at a military treatment facility, then basically... Just make sure you have a up-to-date health checkup. And if you're a lady, you need to have your pap smear up-to-date. So like, if you're over 30, it has to be within five years. And if you're younger than that, I don't remember. It's like three years. Once you have all that set up, you go to the dentist, like your personal dentist, um, and you have them fill out the paperwork saying that you're good to go. Once you have your civilian dentist fill it out, you need to take it to a military dentist so they can approve it. I didn't know and Jess had to take it. <laughs> yeah, because she decided to take off out of state. The same place that you picked up your paperwork, you go back and you turn in your paperwork. And that's when they see it's all completed, that's when they'll make your first appointment. Since it was COVID time, the appointment was over the phone. Once you do your first appointment, which basically just checks to make sure you filled everything out right, they give you your second appointment, which is like a couple weeks later. That's when they double check everything you put in and they go over all the things you put in your medical record. So they're going to be looking for various things depending on what is available over where you are like moving to. So Japan um, has some pretty limited resources, surprisingly. So some people will get accepted even though they have the same problem as other people who got denied for the same problem. 
there is no rhyme or reason to it um but if you have something that you're afraid will disqualify you still apply just in case after you do all that you hurry up and wait so you'll wait a couple of weeks it could be anywhere from like two weeks up to like a couple of months um for them to send back an approval for your dependent to come overseas then you will take the 1300-16 from that um, paperwork and you will bring it over to start the next process of paperwork. Sign up for that no-fee passport the second you can because slots run out really, really fast. We called in February mm -hmm. and we got one for the end of March. Yeah. For the no-fee passport, you need proof of citizenship, a photo for your passport, so like go to CVS and take a photo. You need your sponsor's military ID or a copy of it, a copy of your own. Yeah, it has to be a color copy. Yeah. Their orders, the form DS-11. Um, which is the application. Yeah, which is the application for the NOFI passport. What I was told was even if you have a tourist passport, you fill it out as if you've never had a passport because you're not applying for a tourist passport, you're applying for a NOFI, which is different. Also, something else that the military per person will need to provide is that after they bring the paperwork from the Dependents Overseas Screening to Separations and Transfers Office or HRD or admin, depending on what your hospital is set up for, they're going to give you a DD Form 1059, which basically is another application for, um, for the thing. For um, the NOFI? Yeah, for the NOFI. Because we went to Miramar, we didn't end up needing it. But if we had gone to Naval Base San Diego, we would have needed it. But it needs the blue signature. Oh, and then um, the return time. So at Miramar, that you had to pick it up in person or you had to set somebody to pick it up in person. They would not mail it to you if it got here late and you were already in the other country. Mm -hmm. And it takes, I think they said four to six weeks to arrive. I think it was four to eight. Four to eight weeks. So we had a... We were very close. If we had gone to the naval base, they said they would ship it to us if it arrived and we were overseas. After you are done applying for the NOFI passport, the passport people will either give you back that DD-1059 with the signature saying yes, they applied, or they can give you something in lieu of it um, that just basically says this dependent, insert name here, has applied for a NOFI and you will need to bring that back. Dry, right guys? <laughs> Check your Florence Clearance Guide for mandatory pre-travel trainings. Because we we're going to Japan, there were no trainings that we had to do. But if you're going to Ooh. somewhere like Afghanistan or Bahrain. like Bahrain, yeah, you probably have trainings that you need to do. Here's where it gets really fun. Are you guys ready for this? This is very long. So here's everything that the military member needs to turn in. Start with your isoprep appointment. So basically where I am, I went to med photo. They took a picture of me for a, um, it's basically like a passport photo. It's in civilian clothes and it's just in case you get hijacked by a terrorist. So they have a recent photo of you to use. That's literally the purpose of it. It's terrifying. Like a helicopter mom. And after getting that photo, then you can go over and do your isoprep appointment, which is basically just double checking all the information making sure that in case you do end up go missing they have your stuff you need to have a printout of your imr from bol if you're e4 and below you have to get a financial counseling done there's also an individual anti-terrorism plan or iatp as well as the aircraft and personnel automated clearance system apax um, but because we are going to japan we did not need those check to make sure that you don't need them a copy of your orders a PCS exemption request. Let me tell you about this thing. You send that to your command, they sign it, then you send it to your gaining command, they sign it, they send it back to you, then you send it back to your command, and then they approve it. So you'll need your 1300-16 for all family members that are going overseas, and that is your overseas screening, and it has to be done within six months of your PCS. The Siri 100.2 level A training on JKO and that has to be within six months long. That is very, very long and painful training. Both your dependents and your military members need to do the level one anti-terrorism training. I learned a lot. You did? Yeah, like I learned that you shouldn't lay down in gunfire. You should like crouch, crouch. and in a bomb you should lay down. 
I did not know. Remember you were all like, oh, my first military training. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> I think like 20 minutes into you're like, I hate this. You also need a DD-0084, which is an application for transportation of dependents. At this point, you're picking out when you want to fly, by the way. An NPPSC-1300-1, which is an application for transfers and advances. This is the thing that you'll fill out if you want them to give you your travel money ahead of time. An up-to-date SGLI, which is your life insurance policy. An up-to-date page two, which you can get through the Red DA. A picture of the dependent, dependent's tourist passport. If you don't have a tourist passport, you're gonna to wanna to get one. You can't use your no-fee passport to travel. So like if you're, if you're stationed in Japan, you wanna go back home to visit your family, you can't use that passport to visit family. You have to use your travel passport. You also need an NPPSC 14, no, no 4650-1 passenger reservation request or a PRR, which is somehow separate from your application for transfers of dependents. A copy of your PRAMS, an NSIPS PCS travel form. You don't actually have to turn that in. You just need to complete it on NSIPS. A DD-1056, which is the application for the no-fee passport, um, just to show that they applied for it, or that in lieu of paper that you got from your no-fee. And then once your no-fee actually comes in, they do need a copy of like the information page. And then your dependent entry approval worksheet. Once all of that is in, you get to hurry up and wait. Yeah. And then they will give you your dependent entry approval. We found out that the best way to get stuff done is to be the squeaky wheel on the car. So yeah. they actually move stuff along. Yeah, and I feel really bad about it because I don't want to be that annoying person. I mean, this is not true for everyone, obviously. But based from our experience and based from a lot of experiences that we've read online, if you sit back and let them take care of stuff, it is not going to get done in a timely manner. Everything that we just shared with you, I hope you wrote down every single form, have them all filled out to your max potential, and don't be afraid to be that squeaky wheel. Be respectful, yeah. obviously. Don't be rude about it. And so the only thing that we are currently waiting on is our itinerary, which apparently is different from a ticket. Yeah, so... your itinerary is not your ticket. So that was every single form and process that we had to go through to be able to get to where we are right now. We really hope that when you guys decide, when you guys are making your Oconus journey that it is significantly less painful than <laughs> ours was and that this video has been incredibly helpful for you. Remember to just not stress too hard about it. Like whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Absolutely. No point in suffering twice. If you're here and you're not in the military, then good job on you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much again for your support. We wish you a happy PCS. My brain automatically went, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And I was and like, happy hey, what? New Year. <laughs> we're not even there. It's not even July. Yeah, we're not even close. As always, stay safe, stay happy, most importantly, stay you. See you guys again next time. And until then, we hope you have a wonderful Navy day. Bye. Bye.